Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. Mutton snapper right there, baby. Alright everybody, we're rigging up. We're heading towards the inlet. We're gonna head offshore. What we're gonna do is a little bit of an offshore hands-on planer trolling seminar. We're gonna go over the basics the tactics, the how-tos, the bait, the gear, the line. Hopefully, we'll get into that bite. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. On the boat with me today, I got the one, the only, the fish slayer, Avi. All right, everybody, it's a beautiful afternoon. We got a slight breeze from the east. We're fishing till the sun goes down. You know what that means. We'll see you out on the water. All right, folks. So we've headed off Boca Raton Inlet today. We're about a half mile, three quarters mile out, straight out of the inlet, just barely to the north. Like I said, we're gonna do a little bit of hands-on how-to planer trolling. So what we're gonna be fishing with is this. This is my planer trolling reel. This is a Penn International 30, spooled with 80 pound braid. At the end of my braid, I have a 300 pound swivel. If you're planer trolling, you wanna to try to do it with braid. Monofilament is constantly stretching and retracting underneath the current and the waves and the wind conditions. Braid doesn't give, it's always taut. It's always under the same tension as with whatever your boat is going with. So it makes your planer react properly and dive and stay pretty much at a consistent depth instead of bobbing and weaving and acting erratic, which can seem a little bit unnatural and possibly decrease your hookup ratio. All right, 300 pound swivel. What we're gonna do is we are going to hook this on to the ring of the planer. That way it makes it dive down properly. So that's the first step, is to hook your main line swivel onto the ring of your planer. Next thing we've got is our leader. My leader is 60 pound monofilament, 100 feet of it. Now, on one end, the planer end, I have a 300 pound swivel, and on the lure end, I have a size seven swivel. What we're gonna do is we'll take the 300 pound swivel, which is the planer end, and we're gonna hook it to the plate of the planer. Hook that right there to your plate, and you're good to go. This planer is a number six planer. It's my favorite planer to use. It gets you down about 35 feet when trolled at about six to eight knots. The next thing that we're gonna get into is the lure that I'm gonna use. This is my strip bait lure of choice that I've chosen for today. What it is, is it's a sea witch in the color blue and purple. So I've had a couple of folks ask me, hey, where do you get that sea witch? This is from the company Sea Striker, but it's not called a sea witch on their website. It's called a Ballyhoo Duster. So if you're looking for these things, you look up the company Sea Striker, you look up Ballyhoo Duster, and they have a plethora of colors for you to choose from. And then our trailer lure is a Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer in the crystal color. I have customized this lure. They usually come in red, green, all sorts of uh, prismatic colors or blue, also known as pearl blue. What I have done is I have removed all of the colored mylar from it and left just the iridescent crystal colors on it. So when I'm trolling it, it kind of resembles a bait fish being pulled down underneath. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our size seven swivel from our leader and we will hook it to the end of the little 18 inch wire leader. The wire leader I use on this is number four 40 pound wire leader. And along with this lure, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip it with a Bonita strip. What we've got is I've got double 5-0 tandem hook setup. So I don't complicate things. I hook the Bonita strip straight on to the hooks. 
The way you want to do this is you want to measure out your two hooks. And what you'll do is you're going to insert your trailer hook first. So I have my lead hook up at about the tip of it and then my trailer hook right about in the middle. So when you send your hook through, always go through the meat side and puncture it through the skin side. And then I will sort of make my lead hook perpendicular. And again, I will drive it straight through the skin. And there we have it. And that's how you hook a Benita strip straight onto your hooks. Not complicating things with um, tie on wires for a single hook or anything. Double hooks make your life easy and they decrease your false strike ratio. Okay, so there we have it. We're all rigged up with our bait. We're gonna get ready and plop this bad boy in the water, start pulling him at between six and eight knots, see if we can get into the hookup. We're in about 132 feet of water. We're gonna head east, drop the planer in the water, head out to about 200, 250, smooth S-shaped curves in and out of the deep ledge of the reef. See if we can find someone to get into the bite with. And if we find that bite, we will know what depth the fish should be at, and then we can kind of localize our search to that area. All right, so here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pitch our lure in the water. And we're gonna wind off our hand line, 100-foot leader. It takes a few seconds, but if you're organized as you wind your leader on, you should avoid all tangles. All right, our leader is out. Drop the yo-yo, now we're going to drop the fighter into the water, and we're going to set the rod and free spool. So the thing about trolling with braid, with a planer, is that braid is sensitive. You have to learn the ins and outs of planer trolling with braid. Any resistance from your lure, when you go to set it initially, will cause your planer to trip. So you're going to have to slow down your RPMs, Slow your boat down, let that planer nose start to dive down so that the ring goes up into the proper position and it will set your planer and it will start diving. Another thing to consider, you've got a 100 foot leader out. You don't want to let out 300 foot of mainline. You want to let out about 100 to 125 feet of mainline. That way your planer has enough line to pull out to the proper distance and dive down properly. All right, so we've got our enough mainline. So what I've done is i put the boat in neutral so I can get a little slack in my line to make sure that the planer is diving down. All right, once I think I've got enough slack out, I'll lock up the reel. And we're gonna slowly ease the boat into forward. If you see your rod bend over like this, like a parabolic bend to it, that's how you know your planer is set. Put your click on, you're going to tether your rod to the boat. Don't ever forget to tether your rod to the boat. If you get a nasty recoil on it, you could lose your whole setup. All right, we are up and rolling. Pen International 30 with the 80 pound braid, parabolic bend in the planer trolling rod. We know our planer is set. We're in about 177 feet after getting set up and getting the planer out and set and rolling. So, like I said, we're gonna make smooth S-shaped curves, see if we can find us somewhat. We've got about a couple of hours till the sun goes down. Good time to get that afternoon bite. All right, so as we're trolling along, what I wanna to explain to you is we've got this parabolic bend in this rod. That means our planer is set. One of fish strikes, one of two things will happen. One, it'll be a big enough fish to zing out the line and keep pulling line. Scenario number two, if the fish isn't big enough, like it's a juvenile size kingfish or something like that, this parabolic bend will release and the rod will look more straight up than it is. And then we'll know we've got a fish on it. We'll retrieve our line and see what we got. And that's just a little bit of understanding of what's gonna happen as we're trolling along and looking for the bite. All right, it looks like we just got hit. All right, we got Abby on a fish. So, when you're planer trolling and you get the hook up, if you can, always want to head out to sea. You don't want to ring the dinner bell for the sharks. We're going to keep the boat and slow forward. Not too tight. Reeling in braid can be difficult. 
You having fun, big guy? I am. All right. Get yourself situated. Pull back. Remember, you got to pull back. Reel on the way down. Stand straight up. It's okay. You can stand up. There you go. So what's going to happen is Abby's going to wind up to the leader. Once it gets up to the leader, we're going to hand line in the fish. See if we can uh, get him on board. Once it gets to his planer, we'll see what happens. Oh, he's putting up a little bit of a fight against him right now. There you go. Up. Oh, keep your balance, big guy. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. There you go. As you can see, land is there. We are heading out to sea. Like I said, we don't want a shark to come and get our fish. So great thing about planter trolling is it's usually called meat fishing. You're out to get whatever's biting. So we hook this fish in right around 150 feet of water and see what happens once you get up to the planer. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, so we are at the planer. All right, here you go, that's it, stop. All right, so I'm gonna have Abby go on ahead and go sit down, big guy. We're gonna see, wind up on the planer just a little bit. What you want to do whenever you get a fish on a planer and you are hand blinding it in, you always want to let your leader loop out back of the boat. You don't want to lay it all down on your deck and make a big bird's nest jumbled up mess of it. In that case, that's what you do. You might not be able to reuse it because you'll have a big giant tangle. So we're going to take our time, we're going to hand line this fish in, see what we got. If we need the gap, we need the gap. Taking our time. Like I said, this is one of my favorite parts of planter trolling like this is the hand lining aspect of it. It's literally man versus fish time. getting a little bit closer and see what we got this is planter trolling at its finest this is what it's supposed to do all right i see the fish coming up I'm gonna uh, see what we got looks looks like we got a kingfish see what happens when he gets up to the boat how he's going to react. Uh, oh. Look at that, he's getting closer. Oh, and there oh. he goes, he wants, he wants to take off, which is fine. i tell you what, I'm going to stick him with the gap. Just because I don't want to. Who caught the kingfish? Jeez. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. We got a bloody old fish on the deck. We're going to unhook him and uh, try and go back and get more. All right, so we got the fish layer showing you how it gets done, catching a nice kingfish. Nice first fish on the planer troll. Some epic meat fishing. All right, so we caught that fish in about 150 feet or so, so we're going to head back to that, uh, that climate zone. We're gonna hook up a new Bonita strip on the same lure. See if we can find us another one. All right, we're letting out for round two. We're gonna see if we can get into the fight. Going right back to the climate zone where we hit them. Probably got something to do with temperature and food. So, we'll see what happens. All right, we got another fish on. He just zinged out some line. Here you go, big guy. Put that right in there. All right, he's a bigger fish, so. You're gonna have to pull him back, pull back, reel down. Again, so we've got the fish on. It's time to start heading out to sea. This is a bigger fish. He was able to pull the tighter drag on the planer, so we're gonna take care. Pull back, reel on the way down, big guy. Take your time. Nice fish, nice fish. Whenever a fish is able to pull out drag on a planer, He's got to be decent size. Pull back and reel down, big guy. There we go. 
That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Is to roll, pull back. We gotta have you hooked up. Second fish. Let's see what happens. That did not take long at all. We were trolling for all of maybe four or five minutes and we got the second hit. So let's see what happens. We were in just over 100 feet when we got this second hit. So you never know. There's all sorts of possibilities that can happen out here on the reef's ledge. That's why we planer troll. All right, big guy, remember, pull back, reel on the way down. There you go. All right, we're gonna let up on our throttle just a tad. Gonna let you gain some line on him. Okay. Pull back, reel down. There you go, big guy. All right, we're gonna put some forward momentum. You always wanna keep forward momentum when you've got a fish hooked from the troll. When you hook them initially, those hooks make holes in their mouths. They're elongated holes, they're not perfectly round circles. You wanna keep that line tight, that way the hook keeps pulling against that hole. If your fish does death spirals or anything, he can get off at the last second, and that is entirely not what we want. There you go, pull back and reel down. All right, and again, once we get up to the planer, we're gonna have Abby sit down and we're gonna hand line this fish in. Pull him up. There you go. That's how we do it. There we go, here he comes. Okay, folks, so I wanna explain exactly what happened today. We said we're gonna go offshore, we're gonna do a little bit of planer trolling. Gonna have us a little bit of hands-on seminar. Gonna try and put the fish slayer on some nice fish. And that is precisely what happened. We went over planer trolling in detail. How to rig up your planer to your main line. How to tether on your leader. How to hook on your lure. What the lure is made of and how to rig up a bonita strip onto a strip bait lure. Then we pulled it around for a little bit and luck was on our side. We got not only one fish, but we got two kingfish. Needless to say, we had an epic fishing adventure. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned a little bit about how to do planter trolling and I hope you enjoyed watching the fish slayer on an epic day of king fishing. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.